Um, earlier you were talking about um, also working on like music videos, like you said, like tricky music videos and stuff. And I know you did a music video for, um, sorry for looking at my notes here, for Moses Boyd. But I'm like, I, you know, just seeing the visuals of that, it, it looks like if you were to see a frame of it, like sure, it looks like a black and white like music video, but there's, there are like glowing like shapes of people in this music video. And like that is, that's like a, an awesome music video to look at visually. And like, I'm, I'm left wondering like, how did someone achieve like these images? Like, you know, to make this music video look the way that it does. Like, so I'm curious if you could talk to us about this music video and like the process about like filming this. Yeah. I mean, that was a very fun call for DP to get when mm. the directors you're working with, um, they're called in out. Um, it's their sort of director duo name. They, you know, presented me with these images. These, they, it's a photographer, which I really need to remember what is what they're called. But um, these, like, yeah, fluorescent, glowing characters, and they're like, "This is what a music video is going to look like." And I was like, "Okay, fantastic." I've no, you know, you have no idea how we're going <laughs> to do that, but you proceed as as you w- as, as if you will, and you, you get talking, and then get researching and testing. And what we sort of came to, they they actually suggested it. Um, they worked it out, but it's like this fluorescent paint. Um, kind of like a road sign in the sense that like it reflects back light at the angle of instance where it came mm. from. So it doesn't just reflect it into the room like a white wall, like in lots of directions, but it just most of it goes back down the same angle it came from. And it's a clear paint as well, which is really bizarre. You can't see it unless you sort Probably of like gets get an iPhone torch <laughs> and like, you're, you know, it comes close to your eye line because that's when the angle is. And we tested that and it worked pretty well, especially on an iPhone because the lens and the Light is so close, only a couple of millimeters away. Mm. Um, but what really worked, because the references were just like insane contrast, like com- no detail, just like completely glowing white figure is what we were after. So the lighting ratio of that versus the ambient or the background was like off the scale. It wasn't like 10 stops. It was just like as much as you can get us. Right. <laughs> we'll be better. The more is more. Wow. So we ended up through, in fact, I came across this YouTube video on how to recreate the Blade Runner replicant eyes thing, mm. where you get cat's eyes effect on humans. And they shot those scenes apparently using a teleprompter with a light through it. So you take, take a part where the screen of the teleprompter would sit, which is underneath this one like two-way mirror, one-way mirror, whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. And the light goes up into the teleprompter, reflects off the glass, goes out towards the character, and the camera's sitting behind the glass. And when it comes back through like any reflective... Okay. Uh, like a human's eye, it's actually quite reflective if you get the angle perfectly right. And it comes back and hits the camera. And the angle of the camera and the angle of the lighting, it's not just close, it's the same. Yeah. It's like, that's it's crazy. crazy. That, okay, that makes way more sense because uh, when we were talking originally, you were like, yeah, we live with the teleprompter. I was like, how bright is this teleprompter? I, like, this makes no sense to me. Well, yeah, not that bright <laughs> yeah. because so like... You're shining the light through the teleprompter and using that as the mirror to shape. Or to direct the light? That's the that's where the light's coming from. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the key light basically. Okay. And like it's like looking at a road sign, but rather than your headlights illuminating it and like them being a few feet down there, it's like your eye is where the headlight is, and it's yeah. just like it, you can't really imagine it, but it would just come back completely blinding. If you know what I mean. I've okay. Not very well. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I should be able well, to explain this way because like it, there's a in the I think it's the o- opening of um, 2001. There's like a shot where they're using that same kind of like, it's not rear projection, but they're projecting onto that kind of screen. And there's, I think it's like a bobcat or something. Uh, and its eyes are like super reflective. And it's because they're shining a light right at it. And it's like, it would, they couldn't get around it because that's uh-huh. the only way, but it's the same kind of idea. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, we had this, we did this all in a dark room, like no other lights apart from the maybe some B-roll shots, but basically covered this poor, um, it was actually the talent, the artist, Moses Boyd, was like covered head to toe in this probably deadly um, <laughs> spray paint. You'll find out <laughs> in a few years. Uh, and it was this, it's a spray paint meant for horses, like you meant to cover your like the back of a horse. horse. If Interesting. If you're riding it at night, you know, and okay. you need it to be like <laughs> it's visible like the tail to lights on horses. This is such a weird project. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, we got our hands on a bunch of this stuff, <laughs> covered Moses Boyd in it. Um, Managed to keep it away from the camera, which I was terrified of, of like co- coating somehow because we shot it on film, like coating the film in all this like reflective stuff that would fuck up the scanner. Um, wow. Turned on this light and like we did test it loads in digital, so I knew that it was the lighting effect was going to work, but 
obviously, you know, you still don't really know on film, except for when we looked down the viewfinder and it was just like this. It was glowing down this like 416 viewfinder. Like it was just, you could see it. I actually got a photograph that I took my phone down the viewfinder. It's like, you could tell wow. it was gonna work. It was like, what? fucking hell. So what are you exposed for? Cause you're, you're, it's black and white. Mm. Like it's, it, there's not grays. Like yeah. it's. That was really a tough one as well. Cause you can't meter it. Cause it's not like, hmm. Because <laughs> I like, yeah. need to get take the telepompt off and meter it through the telepompt. Yeah. So it's like I I metered it. How did I fucking do it? I metered it through. I made I instance metered it right next to the subject. So I just measured the light hitting the subject, regardless of the um, telepompter rig. And I think I've exposed it seven stops over. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Whoa. which was crazy, but it's what worked on dig on digital. Yeah, and we so you up, had like a digital backup almost, like you you tried it with that and then went to film. Yeah, so okay. we tested it all on digital in darkroom. Um, like the full video, you tested on digital. No, just the lighting just, effect. Okay, on like a sort of T-shirt covered in this paint, and yeah, we ended up like I like just putting your meter putting your meter to seven stops over, and that was our T-stop. Wow, which is crazy, but it's what it's what worked because we wanted we wanted to like lose the detail. We didn't want to just get like a nice brightly lit human. We wanted yeah. to get like completely fluorescent glowing, like, you know, that REM jet effect you get, like where it's just like goes a red halation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like we wanted to really go crazy. And we ended up doing a film, a te testing on digital then testing on film. And then we found that pushing it two stops on, on top of the seven stops wow. exposure was the best way to do it. Wow. And it still, st still didn't really get us as well as far as we wanted because we still had to color grade it more. Mm. Um, because just film, to boost contrast? Yeah, because like film keeps highlights so well. So you're trying okay. to like you're trying to do exactly what the film <laughs> what is, it's not is, supposed to be. It's perfect at, at stopping you from doing. Yeah, and then we and yeah, like with uh we color graded it with some few finishing touches from Thomas Mangum, uh, who's now at Black Kite, who I love working with. And yeah, got this insanely contrasty image. We shot it on double X as well, which is really contrasty as well. So we just did everything we could to just that's awesome. Stretch this ratio. There, there's like a, there's a few shots where it's just like a pattern too. Like, did you have an artist in there that like painted the backdrops of like just these, or is that was is that a different kind of? Effect? We, we actually shot a laptop with some crazy site, crazy. Okay. It sounds really basic, but it was just like trying to get weird things, and we shot a laptop with this with these patterns on it, and mm -hmm. that went through the push development process. So. And it's on double X, which is so crunchy. Nice. You just shot a laptop. I love that. <laughs> some That's... B roll. Yeah. We took we painted some trace frames as well, like um trace frames without any uh gel on them, just painted that in the material mm. and put them on C stands and uh we did like stop motion where we moved the camera like on this dolly like towards it. So you get this sort of like flying through trace frames as well. Two thousand one again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we had a Bolex as our B cam, which we did like long. You can do like bulb exposures on my Bolex, so you just yeah. hold it down as long as you want. So we did like this complete. It looks. I looked so silly. I was just running around with this Bolex, like just like pressing like. <laughs> then like that would be half a second or two seconds. Like I had like a metronome oh, for, for like streaks almost. Yeah, like I had a metronome playing on my phone to be like one every two seconds. Like trying to like get these two second exposures that were roughly as long as each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, running around and we didn't do the. Um, teleprompter rig on that. We just gaffer taped like a, a light as close to the lens as we could and that kind of worked enough. And yeah, we just had fun with it. That's funny that you had a metronome to I make like, it as like precise as possible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, there, there was a method to the man. Trying to yeah, take yeah. The, the human element out of the human element. Right. Like it's <laughs> right. Yeah. It was a great project and it was actually a really, really small budget. We just had like, yeah, it was like probably 10 of us in the room, I feel like, and wow. a, a, a grip, a gaffer, a couple of camera assistants and lovely producer and it wasn't it wasn't like a big one it was just love it's just a really good just a cool one is it cool how you can still get hit up years later about this project that probably was you know quite indie when you shot it you were just experimenting and yet like it's so recognizable mm. i think that's pretty amazing yeah i mean we didn't really invent the like i need to find that reference for who the f original photographer was because we didn't even invent that we just sort of remixed it a bit and moved it on and yeah, created right. something. Did it for motion and yeah, exactly. It's, I think it's a, in a good way. Hopefully, yeah. it wasn't like plagiarism. It's just like combining this. Yeah, it took a a, a a reference or a seed of it. Yeah.